Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be discussing the sign of Pisces. So this officially is the introduction video to Pisces season. So to just start off this video I want to say happy birthday to all of you solar Pisces out there. All right, so in today's video then we're going to be looking at really your Pisces house also looking at your Neptune sign and house as well as your 12th house within your natal birth start. And this is really all with the intention of explaining the sign or the archetype of Pisces overall. What I want to know then is whether or not you have any planets within the sign of Pisces. Also, I want to know about your Neptune placement. So what's going on with Neptune within your natal birth chart. And also let us know about your 12th house placements within the comment section. So put all of that information down in the comment section down below. And I also just want to give a quick shout out to the winner from the Pisces round from the Zodiac Art Competition. And that was Maureen. Maureen created this lovely piece right here for the front cover of the Pisces season ebook. So the Pisces season ebook is officially up for download. So if you want to pick up a copy, then go to the description box down below, okay? So it's going to have further information all about Neptune, your 12th house, your Pisces house. Plus it also touches on Neptune and Pisces intercepted along with Neptune retrograde. And it's really just overall a practical how-to guide for Pisces season. So like I said, description box down below for your copy. Okay, so with all those introductions out of the way, Let's do this. information all about archetypes then please be sure to check out my introduction video but in a nutshell an archetype is a primitive mental image derived from the collective unconscious and when it comes to the archetype of Pisces the mental image that we notice is what looks like two fish that are connected together by a cord but are both swimming in opposite directions and this right here signifies duality because as one fish is swimming towards the light, the other fish is swimming towards the dark. Meaning, the symbol of Pisces can represent these two, these very two opposing forces that can take place within each and every one of us. See, on one hand, there is a side to Pisces that is very much concerned with being a part of society, but on the other hand, there is this other side to Pisces that would much rather disconnect and really just lock themselves away from society. Kind of like the back and forth or the tug of war between extroverts and introverts. And when it comes to the cord that is tying the fish together, well, it is this very cord that can represent unity. It symbolizes the continuity of the zodiac wheel as it moves from Pisces back to Aries in order to start the whole process once again. So signifying an end and a beginning occurring at the same time. And you further notice here with the symbol that is the infinity symbol, okay? And this very infinity symbol looks like the Christian symbol of the fish, but um, the Christian symbol of the fish, if you put two of them together, that will equivalent to the infinity symbol, which I think is quite interesting in that regard. But still, in, it was the Christian era that is often really known as the age of Pisces. And this symbol, of course, can be found within stories within the Bible. But again, if you look to the infinity symbol, this symbol, like I said, can show the two fish being connected together. So essentially, it's through this very symbol of Pisces that the physical and the spiritual worlds meet. But the question, however, is where? Where do they meet exactly? I mean, if this symbol represents infinity and boundlessness, then how can there possibly be a meeting point between the two? in the first place. And so this leads to the question that humans have been trying to figure out for many and many of years. When did life begin and who caused it? Is this all an illusion and does perception create reality? Or was it all started by a huge bang? 
But even that theory leaves scientists just baffled and eager with wonder. Now before we do go any further into this archetype, what I want to do is I want to take it a step back because we want to be able to be able to identify where we are coming from and we are coming from Aquarius season and it's Aquarius season that comes before Pisces within the astrological calendar year and so during this season we are encouraged to question and challenge authority as well as the status quo and we're also encouraged to really think independently and create changes in our lives for the betterment of mankind. It's Aquarius season that really urges us to seek freedom and to think about the future for all. So what type of planet would you like to live in? And what type of future would you like to create for the world? Also, what are your theories and your concepts that are maybe different in comparison to how things have been previously done? Essentially, it's really about breaking through systems that are outdated and old within your own life in order to really make room for new and innovative systems that hopefully help you feel a lot more hopeful for your future self. But as we approach Pisces season, the dialogue changes, okay? The dialogue certainly changes quite a bit because it's Pisces that sinks much deeper and it really does dive. It dives into the human condition. See, whilst Aquarius is much more objective and impersonal in its view and dealings with others, Pisces is emotional, sensitive, empathetic and compassionate. Pisces season is a representation of the collective unconscious, so therefore we are encouraged during the season to pick up on the emotional cues and the unseen forces such as hidden pain and sadness and suffering or even hidden feelings of joy and happiness. This highly intuitive sign is susceptible to the psychological ups and downs of the human experience. And this kind of reminds me of a post that I found on Instagram. So the Instagram account is at Rising Woman and it really said in this post, so she quoted, we might find that underneath our feelings are other feelings. For example, at first we might feel anger, but if we go deeper underneath the anger, we may find deep sadness. This I find very, very interesting because I really have experienced something similar um, within my own life. Times whenever my Pisces friend has asked me if I was okay or whenever they have maybe felt that something was off or wrong. So I would be the type of person to turn around and say, you know, what I was feeling, but I maybe didn't exactly understand or I wasn't really able to articulate very well how I was, how I was feeling. But somehow she would sort of know that there was more. There was more underneath the surface. Now, by no means is this a pleasant thing, okay? Um, nor is it straightforward or easy to figure out. It's not very black and white when it comes to what's really going on within us deeply. And I think this is because humans are powerfully complex, very mysterious, and also thoughts and emotions are. It's actually Pisces itself that is very complex and mysterious in its dealings with the physical world. Pisces feels all, but it struggles to make sense of exactly what. It's the type of sign that really invites you in with this very serene and poetic smile, but then leaves you feeling dazzled and confused. Meaning that the archetype of Pisces is associated with the unknown. It seeks to explore the inner life of humanity. Ultimately, it's Pisces season that comes along after Aquarius season and it teaches us about the importance of showing compassion and empathy towards other people's feelings. Now it's also the archetype of Pisces that encourages us to have inner faith by accepting what is or what isn't going to happen. So really to allow for events to unfold and happen as they should without pushing or forcing anything. It's a sign that urges us to turn inward by reflecting on our pain in order for us to heal. How we feel may be difficult to put into words, 
but by allowing ourselves to feel, we can allow for our emotions to really flow much more efficiently. And by doing so, our emotional intelligence will improve along with our intuition, hopefully. It's Pisces season that switches our focus here, folks, <laughs> to how we can collectively heal and revitalize ourselves. We plunge into our deepest unconscious and get in touch with our darkest shadows. Our darkest shadow being the parts of ourselves that we share with everyone and everything, but yet are completely in denial over possessing within. And this right here is the very importance of the archetype of Pisces because it's Pisces that dives deeper, like I said. It's Pisces that looks within the unconscious. But through this process, we also notice through Pisces that we can share similar feelings and emotions with everybody else around us. It's just that, you know what? Some people may be better at hiding things than others. The archetype of Pisces can also signify our tendency to merge with the inner world to such an extent that we leave ourselves open to getting hurt. So imagine here a parent whose child falls into the wrong crowd and becomes addicted to drugs. Maybe they have to go to rehab or maybe they're just really struggling. This parent may seek or wish to really help their child, but it's then that the, the parent themselves, they then end up becoming sick and ridden with worry, anxiety, fatigue, and hopelessness. Meaning that we learn from this archetype how we can often merge with other people's inner lives and how we can become so intertwined with others that we become disconnected from ourselves. We quite literally can lose ourselves in other people. However, it's also through the darkness, so to speak, that an individual can heal by seeking support from professionals and so on. So of course, with this instance, the individual, the child can seek help and support from other people. And so through that very difficult process, they can come out the other end healed or they can come out the other end feeling much more empowered. Therefore, Pisces can represent how we come up for air after a period of what feels like suffocation and isolation. It's a deeply cleansing, healing, and revitalizing energy. Furthermore, Pisces urges us to get in touch with our spiritual essence, to tap into the larger questions of existence. It signifies inner knowing and can be quite silent and still in its faith. It's this mighty sign that can signify just how miraculous and mysterious spirituality can be. I mean, does anyone know the true essence of why humanity is here? And it also represents just how ludicrous it can be to measure something that is invisible or untouchable and undefined. And so Pisces symbolizes all things mystical, otherworldly, and esoteric. It relates to anything soulful and spiritual. Now, like I said, Pisces can look at the ending of the zodiac wheel. So it looks at the ending and the finalizing stage. So during Pisces season, we are encouraged to reflect into our deeper yearnings by getting in touch with who we are spiritually and also emotionally. This process may involve releasing and letting go in order to really shed, in order for us to shed anything that leaves us feeling unfulfilled and confused on the inside. And so through this deep cleansing process, we move into a new beginning, okay? There's also this beginning stage that can sort of come with Pisces, but also this very beginning stage as we're shut into Aries season. By learning how to let go and learning how to somewhat cleanse from within, then we can move into Aries season with much more clarity and a peace of mind. Plus, we are also urged to tap into our imagination and dreams through this very archetype of Pisces and we can then take what we discover and express it through the likes of art 
music, poetry, film, dance, and so on. Referring back to the collective unconscious here though, I want to mention that this term was coined by Carl Jung and his meaning of the collective unconscious is that it refers to structures of the unconscious mind which are shared amongst beings of the same species. I see this personally as Pisces then representing the inner understanding that whatever it feels, it feels with others. So this whole idea of your happiness is my happiness, your joy is my joy, your pain is my pain, your sadness is my sadness. A Pisces is also a water sign, meaning that it's connected with emotions and feelings. And it's also a mutable sign, meaning that it's adjustable, adaptable, and open to change. And this mutable water combination, I believe, can result in a sign that's concerned with adjusting and changing emotions and feelings. So for example, deciding last minute that you can't make it to a meeting because you're tired, <laughs> or telling a friend that you simply do not want to go out anymore. <laughs> it's a sign related with the changes of emotion within the atmosphere. And it's also a sign that can be easily influenced by others emotionally. Furthermore, Pisces is an archetype that really looks at mirroring. So this whole mirroring quality to Pisces. As humans, you see, we can mirror each other all the time in order to fit in or be accepted socially, for example. And so it could be suggested in this way that when dealing with Pisces energy, you may be presented with a reflection of something that is very deep inside of you. Now the last thing that I want to mention about this sign is how it's a sign that deeply wants to understand the self without an audience. So this corresponds with who you are whenever no one is looking, who you are behind the scenes. So the most private and intimate part of you, your most private self, your hidden self. The individual you are whenever you are still free of judgment and out of clear view. So with the sign of Pisces explained overall, what I am now going to do is I'm going to play you some media and clips that I think can be associated with this archetype. Now wherever Pisces is located within your natal birth chart, it is going to show you where you tap into your imagination 
or into the dream world. It's a house where you fantasize and reflect upon what you could be. It's also an area of life where you retreat into your most private and intimate realm. And it's from here that you imagine a better world and you sink into your deeper yearnings. So for example, if you have Pisces ruling your second house, you may have so many imaginative ways to make money or you may dream of an ideal world where money is used with compassion or as a way to unify the world rather than separate it. Or you may be extremely private and hidden when it comes to your finances or when it comes to the type of wardrobe that you dream of having. Let's say for example you have Pisces ruling your fourth house. Well, you may fantasize upon the dream home that you wish to have or you may do a lot of deep self-reflection at home. It could even be here that your family life is just full of secrets. Now the Pisces house furthermore is a house that can represent where you feel bogged down by the sorrows of the world. So looking at the whole pain and suffering, you may feel bogged down by the world around you without even realizing it or knowing maybe why you're feeling low. And so it's an area of life here where you can feel depressed, you can feel directionless. So for example, if you have Pisces ruling your first house, you may feel bogged down by the sorrows or suffering of the world when it comes to the likes of decision making, appearances, name calling and self-discovery. Maybe growing up, people within your environment, they projected all of their crap onto you. Let's say for example, you have Pisces ruling your third house. You may feel bogged down by the sorrows and suffering of the world when it comes to the likes of your intellect or when it comes to your neighborhood, when it comes to siblings or when it comes to the type of information that the world is just feeding you on a daily basis. Maybe you see right through all of the lies and the deceit or maybe it pains you to see your siblings or members within your local community hurting in some way. The Pisces house is also an area of life where you are encouraged to let go and just go with the flow. And so it's important not to resist the current by allowing for situations and events to unfold as they should within your Pisces house. It's essentially an area of life where we are encouraged to just be. And by doing so, we can feel at peace. So for example, if you have Pisces ruling your 11th house, you just may feel flow with it when it comes to social gatherings and when it comes to your friendship circles. Or for example, you maybe have Pisces ruling your sixth house. You may just flow when it comes to your to-do list or your workload or when it comes to your health and fitness. Now, this is not to say that it's about doing absolutely nothing within your Pisces house, but rather this whole concept of letting go of attachment, letting go of particular emotions or thoughts that can overwhelm us or make us just want to explode, letting go also of materials and people. Yes, this process can be extremely challenging because humans are so attached to things that they deem as valuable, but it's within the Pisces house where we are urged to become less attached and ego guarded. Then again, it's also where lines can become blurred and where boundaries can be crossed as well. So for example, if you have Pisces ruling your seventh house, lines can become blurred within your one-on-one -on -one relationships. You may be treated like a doormat by partners or you may cross your partner's boundaries repeatedly yourself. Your partner may also try to invade your privacy or you may merge your whole identity so much with your partner that you lose yourself. Or let's say for example, you have Pisces ruling your 10th house. Well, lines can become blurred between you and your manager or boundaries can be repeatedly crossed within your profession. You may take on more than you can physically handle within your career or you may merge so much with your professional persona that you lose your own identity to an extent. 
So in this way, it's important that we don't lose our common sense or critical judgment within our Pisces house. Because with a lack of boundaries, we may be left open and vulnerable to potential predators and or intruders. Now furthermore, the Pisces house can be where you experience pulling on your heartstrings as a way to emotionally manipulate or use your empathy against you. Guilt may be used, for example, as a tactic to get you to bend to another person's will. So for example, if you have Pisces ruling your ninth house, you may be emotionally manipulated when it comes to your belief system. Religion or spiritual beliefs may be used as a way to morph your worldview or it could be through the likes of professors or gurus or um, the news even that you read. Or let's say for example that you have Pisces ruling your 12th house. You may possibly be emotionally manipulated when it comes to the likes of your spirituality and healing. So with this respect, um, alcohol or drugs may come into the equation could be your typical psychedelic experience here that changes your perception entirely. Essentially, it is difficult to be self-absorbed in our Pisces house because it's where we consider others who may be hurting just as much as we are. Then again, it's also us who can project our own inner chaos onto others within this area of life as well. So it can show you where you may paint your own visions and images onto others and it's these very images and visions that can be stemming from your unconscious hopes and fears. So let's say for example then that you have Pisces ruling your fifth house. Well you may paint images onto your romantic partners. You may project onto your romantic partners. Maybe you project your unconscious hopes onto the person that you're attracted to or that you have this big fat crush on. And so you feel really deeply disappointed if ever that person doesn't like you back. Or let's say for example you have Pisces ruling your eighth house, well you may paint visions and all these kind of fantasies into the realm of sexual exploration. Maybe you project your unconscious fears onto your sexual partner and this can maybe result in a lot of confusion and misunderstandings between you and your partner. Likewise, we can become blindsided and be in a state of self-denial and deception within our Pisces house. You may lack awareness, resulting in you possibly falling victim and being duped. You may not acknowledge what is true and so you may wear rose-colored glasses in order to kind of make yourself believe or see what you believe or think to be true. So in this respect, it's really important for us to get real with ourselves and see things for what they actually are within this particular area of life. Some time alone may be required within the Pisces house. That way, you can recharge your batteries and center yourself. And by spending some time alone, you can come back out feeling revitalized and renewed. Now when it comes to the ruling planet of Pisces, Neptune, so really looking at your Neptune sign, well, Neptune can signify how you may lose your own identity in order to merge with something greater than yourself. So let's just think of the very function of water for just one moment. Well, one of the functions of water is that it helps us mix and dissolve powders in order to produce beverages, for example, so the likes of coffee and hot chocolate. So in this respect, when it comes to the planet Neptune, we recognize the dissolving process, the dissolving function and the unifying function between people and the rest of life, suggesting that Neptune can be associated with when you dissolve or sacrifice your ego for the sake of others. You may put your own needs and or desires to the side in order to merge with another person's. Then again, Neptune can also show us our tendency to display emotions that are quite volatile and eruptive. 
the type of emotions that can overwhelm us to the point of losing control where we, f where we feel like we are drowning. Meaning that the placement of Neptune within your natal birth chart is going to show you the extremities or the extremities of emotions that you may experience. But kind of going back to the whole merging process associated with Neptune, because it could be suggested that this disintegration of the ego is actually the work of the ego itself. I want you to picture a spiritual guru teaching others how to let go of the material world by striving for spiritual enlightenment, ha ha ha. Yet behind closed doors this same individual is greatly and highly materialistic. Also picture an individual giving to charity and then broadcasting it all over social media because the whole world gets to see just how good and kind hearted this individual is, right? Both of these examples may just be the ego. Though still, having said that, the function of Neptune is that of selfless devotion to another. Furthermore, the ego can also be dissolved in other ways, <laughs> through the likes of drugs, alcohol and other substances. Because it's these very substances that can morph or alternate an individual's current state or perception. Or they may help them reach a state of bliss and nirvana. See, often as humans, we can become overwhelmed by all of the pressures of life that we reach out for something. Something to make us feel better. An emotional crutch, perhaps? But yet, it's through this process that we may develop an addiction or a dependency. And so it's the placement of Neptune that can show you how and where you may handle such substances. On the other hand, the function of Neptune is also to help us realize that the bliss that we are searching for, this bliss already exists within. And that we have the strength and power to experience stillness and peace. Now Neptune can also show you how and where you seek to be rescued or saved by others as um, you play the victim, as well as actually how and where you may become the saviour or rescuer yourself. Though essentially it really is Neptune that can point towards your healing process by showing yourself self-compassion. Now Neptune is also the higher octave of Venus and it's also a generational planet. It stays in one sign for about 14 years and it's associated with anything esoteric and spiritual. It can be connected with any unseen gifts that you may have. However, it's also a planet of confusion and fog and disillusionment, suggesting that Neptune within your natal birth chart can come across as quite delusional or as unclear and pretty vague. Whichever sign then that Neptune is in, it is going to show you how society can become disillusioned or misguided. It can also represent how your generation is emotionally manipulated where your perception is morphed. Likewise, the Neptune sign can show you how your society plays the role of the victim and or the role of the saviour but it can furthermore show you how your generation dissolves boundaries and merges together by tapping into the collective unconscious. So for example, imagine a nation's trauma, okay? The, the trauma of a nation being shared with everyone else or a nation's sorrow or suffering being what brings that particular nation or group of people together. Furthermore, the Neptune sign can represent how society changes through the likes of music and film and media, along with how your generation idealizes others by projecting their own fantasies onto them. Now, whichever house Neptune is in, it's going to then be much more personal to you. And so it's going to show you where you dissolve boundaries and unify or merge with others. It's also going to show you where you sacrifice your needs and where you express compassion and empathy for others. 
the Neptune house can show you where you seek to be rescued as you play the victim role as well as you playing the saviour role. Or looking at how you can essentially martyr yourself for the sake of others even if they don't want to be helped or saved. Not to mention it can be an area of life where you feel confused or disorientated. You may wear these rose-coloured glasses as stated in this house and remain in a state of denial. And it can also signify where you experience phobias and fears as well as paranoia and anxiety attacks. Plus, this house can also be a house of addiction along with where you escape dream and seek serenity and peace. Now when it comes to the 12th house within your natal birth chart, it is going to show you where you are faced with the dilemma between wanting to lose your identity by transcending your separateness, whilst also being terrified of disintegrating yourself as a separate individual at the same time. So imagine a nun who devotes their life to God or a Buddhist who meditates and prays most of their life. Could it be suggested that these individuals are sacrificing their ego to merge with the divine? But on the other hand, take for example a rock star who devotes their life. They devote their life to sex, drugs and rock and roll. Or take even the working class individual who devotes their life to their career. Are these individuals then frightened of dissolving their ego? Or is it possible that the nun or Buddhist as mentioned are the ones playing into a false narrative? Whatever the case may be with this, it's from the 12th house that questions of existence and perceptions of God arise. Therefore, the 12th house within your natal birth chart is going to show you how you seek transcendence and merge with something higher at the risk of dissolving your ego identity. So for example, if you have Taurus ruling your 12th house, you may seek transcendence by getting in touch with nature. You may dissolve your ego by giving up your materials and possessions or by passing them on to others. Or let's say for example you have Virgo ruling your 12th house. You may seek transcendence through your health and wellness. You could take on a diet based on your devotion to God for example. Or you may dissolve your ego by sacrificing your plans and personal well-being for those of others. Furthermore, the 12th house is an area of life where you let go of attachment. It looks at how you can feel at peace even without the latest iPhone or Gucci handbag for example. Naturally, letting go of anything uh, that makes our ego feel fulfilled can be difficult. And so we are faced with two options within the 12th house, to either surrender or suffer. Meaning that the 12th house can signify this letting go of attachment concept or theory by recognizing that whatever is in the 12th house doesn't belong to us. So for example, if you have Leo ruling your 12th house, you may be learning how to let go of attachment to gaining attention. Or let's say for example if you have Aries ruling your 12th house, you may be learning how to let go of attachment, let go of attachment to always being first or winning. When you can serve society by accepting these qualities within the 12th house do not belong to you, you may actually feel a lot more at peace. And by doing so, funnily enough, these unconscious fragmented parts of your psyche, they just might actually start to flow <laughs> instead of you falling victim to them, hence suffering. Following on from this point, the 12th house is a house of pain and suffering. It's where you may try to alleviate your suffering by being a healer or a saviour for others or by turning to particular substances or by taking part in escapism. So for example, if you have Gemini ruling your 12th house, you may try to alleviate your suffering by turning to others to have a conversation or a good chat. 
You may consume substances that shift your mental capacity, or you may take part in escapism through the likes of reading or watching movies or role play. Let's say, for example, you have Aquarius ruling your 12th house. You may try to alleviate suffering by seeking to help others with their mental health or by joining a certain cause or movement. You may consume substances that help you grasp the bigger picture or you may take part in escapism through the likes of clubbing, conspiracy theories or social justice. Now the 12th house is often viewed as the house of oneness or wholeness. And throughout history, many scientists and mystics alike have been telling us that we are interconnected and we're a part of a universal matrix. So with that being said, it's suggested that all experiences, choices, behaviours and attitudes, they are stored within the unconscious memory. Now this theory, of course, it is a theory. I'm not saying that it's factual. I'm not saying that it is correct. It is a theory. Well, it suggests that the 12th house is an unbounded and infinite area of life. The 12th house that is unconscious in its discovery. It goes much deeper as it taps into the emotional drives of society as a whole. So imagine here a soldier dying for their country or family. The emotions experienced by this soldier's family may be passed on to future family members to come. Also take the events of 9-11, a highly traumatic event that impacted people on a global scale, but it did not just stop with one generation. The impacts of this very event have influenced many future generations and will still continue to impact future generations to come. So in this respect, it is the 12th house that can signify this collective influence when it comes to emotions and feelings, further suggesting that the 12th house can show you how you receive information from the large pool of memory that is the collective unconscious. So for example, if you have cancer ruling your 12th house, you may tap into the deeper emotions associated with the past, especially when it comes to your ancestry, or maybe you're highly susceptible to your family's suffering and pain. Or let's say, for example, you have Scorpio ruling your 12th house, you may tap into some secretive groundbreaking information that makes you feel extremely uneasy. This could be information that you were not supposed to know and so you may be left with a bit of a dilemma on your hands. Another very interesting thing about the 12th house, which I think is the most interesting thing in my own personal opinion, is that it can also be associated with the mother's womb within astrology, representing really what your mother may have passed on to you unconsciously during pregnancy and birth. Now, according to this theory, the developing embryo and or baby is receptive to its mother's physical substances and psychological state. So for example, if you have Capricorn ruling your 12th house, maybe your mother had many fears of being a mother resulting in you being born with feelings of cautiousness and self-doubt. But then let's also say, for example, you have Libra ruling your 12th house. Maybe your mother was concerned with her marriage or relationship at the time whenever she was pregnant with you. Or maybe she got married because she found out that she was pregnant with you. Or maybe she was already married and was questioning the union. Whatever the case, you may have been born with feelings of diplomacy and or phobias surrounding relationships and commitment. Now the 12th house is also often associated with being the house of past lives and karma. And many who follow or believe in the whole all is one principle, as previously mentioned, they may also believe in reincarnation. Now, reincarnationists believe that each soul is on a unique journey to return back to its source. And this theory is based on the notion that each individual or each soul chooses a certain time to be born in order to really address the karma that they have occurred as a result of past actions. So for example, if you believe in this particular theory, if you have Sagittarius ruling your 12th house, you may have been a rowdy, crude or arrogant individual in a past life <laughs> where you acted like a 
a know-it-all, like you knew everything, or you may have been really, really preachy. <laughs> or let's say, for example, you have Pisces ruling your 12th house. You may have been a drug addict or a drunkard who disassociated from reality in a past life. Though, whether or not you believe in past lives or karma, the 12th house can provide an indication into how you approach such spiritual subject matters as well. Another thing that I want to mention when it comes to the 12th house is that it rules over anything hidden and unseen, so the likes of prisons and hospitals. Now this is because these places are where people are put away, they're shut out from society, further suggesting here that the 12th house rules over experiences within the likes of mental institutions, hospices, orphanages and rehab centres. And it's also an area of life that points towards behind the scenes activity and it can pertain to anyone plotting against us without us knowing as well as how we can act whenever nobody is looking. After all, it is the most hidden and private and unseen house. It can act as a blind spot. And so in this respect, placements in the 12th house can prevent us from achieving our conscious goals and aims. This is because the unconscious mind is often in the driver's seat controlling us so it, it can be good here to really look at the 12th house within your natal birth chart in order to get really some insight into your unconscious drives and motivations. It's also a house where we are presented with our greatest fears and phobias, as well as secrets and addictions. Plus, the 12th house can show you the individual that you are whenever you are high or drunk. And another thing to mention is that environments that involve storage can pertain to the 12th house, such as the likes of museums and libraries. The last thing though that I want to mention when it comes to the 12th house is that it can be viewed as the house of secret enemies. This can quite literally mean people secretly disliking us or hoping um, that we feel or it can mean that people are plotting to actually hurt us. However, this theory can also translate into hidden weaknesses that can undermine our goals and aims. And it's these hidden weaknesses that we may dislike in other people. So whenever they bring out our hidden weakness that they may be very, very good at, we may not like that very much because of how much they hinder our own progress. On the other hand, however, some astrologers look at the 12th house as the house of hidden talents. Just like opening a treasure chest, we may just find a golden nugget when tapping into the 12th house. Ultimately, however, the 12th house can address our hidden and unconscious qualities. Okay then Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my very long introduction video to Pisces season by looking at your Pisces house, your Neptune sign and house and finishing off by looking at your 12th house, all with the intention of explaining the archetype of Pisces overall. Now again, like I said, let us know your placements, so your Neptune placement, your Pisces house placements, your 12th house placements in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, thank you for subscribing and of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then go right ahead and click that subscribe button. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye!